Hi, this is Stephen from Owner Disown, and thank you very much for your recent support on uh, my uh, recent uh, videos on the uh, ASUS and the Alienware. And uh, as we all know, the uh, recent uh, testing on the Alienware 15R3, it has been mighty hot, ideal for a winter's night. Um, but that CPU is a burner, and unless you've got a, a fan blasting at the back of it, how do you keep it cool? Um, it would seem apparent that uh, Alienware don't really want you to overclock it with it uh, being embedded in the BIOS and not having a utility, a software utility, which you can activate the uh, power fan on and off without going back into the BIOS. So I've got a feeling they don't really want you to do that. Um, so I recommend, if you're buying one now, to go for the i7-6700HQ. Uh, uh, but if you do have the i7-6820 like I have here, what can you do? Um, so I've taken a look at the uh, overclocking options using a, a, a utility called uh, uh, Intel's Advanced Tuning Utility. And I'll put a link of that in the description below. And I'll go through the settings I found that uh, work the best to give optimal temperatures uh, and performance in games without, uh, without crashing or anything. Um, so let's take a look at my findings. Thank you. So using the uh, Intel Extreme Tuning Utility to um, alter the uh, multipliers on the CPU. Um, so you can uh, just move the slider along or click these little, click these little arrows. Um, so uh, on this uh, profile, um, the first core active uh, put to a 35 multiplier, which means 3500 MHz um, clock. And the four cores, four cores are active at 3400 MHz clock. Um, so I did that. I also changed it to be uh, 40, 39, 38, 37, uh, and so forth to create two profiles. Um, so on this profile, I ran it with no power fan, and uh, on the uh, other profile, I uh, ran it uh, with uh, the power fan active. And in both profiles, I ran my benchmarks with the uh, graphics card overclocked. So looking at the settings to try and bring the temperatures down, I wanted to try and get uh, a maximum of 90 degrees. Um, I reduced the uh, core voltage offset. Unfortunately, it is uh, stuck on adaptive, so it'll keep on changing. Um, I changed the uh, the maximum core ampage there to uh, reduce that down. I think that was critical. I also changed the uh, the turbo boost short power max, which, as you can see, limits the processor short duration of maximum power when turbo boost is engaged. That's a power limit two in the BIOS. And the same for power limit one in the BIOS. I reduced the, that one down as well. And I reduced, uh, actually, I increased the turbo boost power time window. And this is the time window over which the average CPU core power must be below the turbo boost. So I increased that as well. So here are the tests I am going to do. First, a comparison between the latest uh, NVIDIA driver version 375.57 versus the 369.32 I used in my previous video. Um, all those at stock clocks. Then I'm going to be doing a CPU and GPU overclocked um, showing the frames per second. Um, first off with the, the multipliers um, 35, 35, 34, 34. That means um, with uh, one core active for 3500 MHz, four cores active, uh, 3400 MHz, and uh, no power uh, fan activated there. Uh, and then the multiplier is 40, 39, 38, 37. Again, that means uh, with one uh, core active for uh, 4000 MHz clock, with four core cores active for uh, 3700 MHz. There I'll have the power fan activated from the BIOS, and at uh, all times I'll be measuring the CPU temperatures. In both overclocking modes, I uh, ran the benchmarks with the uh, GPU overclocked as well. Um, so, let's uh, have a look at the results. So first up, uh, we're looking at uh, Cinebench R15 from Maxon. At stock clocks, we've got 632 points. At 3500 MHz clock, we've got uh, 688 points uh, at 85 degrees C. This is without the power fan. Um, kicking the power fan on and up upping it to 4000 MHz, we're looking at 710 points and 86 degrees C. So 
So time spy is a direct X12 benchmark, and at stock clocks, uh, it gave 5,103 points with a temperature of 84 degrees Celsius. Um, up again to uh, 3,500 megahertz, gave similar 50 50 points, and the temperature was at 94 degrees again without the power fan. Um, up again to 4,000 megahertz, and the power fan kick, uh, activated, gave 5,445 uh, points, uh, but the temperature was uh, still at 96 degrees C. Running the uh, DX11 Firestrike Extreme benchmark, stock clocks give 7,152 points, temperature roasting 93 degrees C. Upping it to 3,500 MHz, um, we get uh, 7,205 points, a similar temperature 90 degrees C. And uh, activating the power fan and upping the clocks to 4,000, 7,872 points, temperature comes down to 86 degrees C. So Crisis 3 at 1080p, um, the previous driver uh, got 55 frames per second, updating it to 375.57 yielded incre massive increase to 69 frames per second, 93 degrees C. Upping the frequency to 3500 MHz, uh, 76 frames per second, 85 degrees C using the uh, tweak I used to bring the temperatures down, and upping it to 4000 MHz, 77 frames per second, 91 degrees C with the power fan activated. So Assassin's Creed Syndicate is a strange one, uh, playing at 1080p, uh, the change in driver didn't really make uh, any improvement at all, in fact it reduced it slightly, the temperature did come down though, um, increasing the clock speed and overclocking the GPU um, did increase the performance from the, uh, the, the base clocks to about 63 frames per second, temperature stayed steady around about uh, 86, uh, 85, bear in mind the 4000 megahertz is the uh, power fan mode as well. So Metro Last Light is a killer on uh, temperatures for this laptop, uh, let me tell you. Um, so I ran uh, three iterations of the benchmark in the sequence. Um, the previous driver um, gave 88 frames per second, uh, updating to the 375.57. Massive improvement, 108 frames per second. Temperature still high, 90 degrees. Um, 3500 megahertz uh, clock. Uh, it dropped down to 99 frames per second, but I suspect with the temperature of 94 degrees, I was getting thermal throttling there. Um, I get, of course, no uh, super fan on that one. So, uh, upping it to 4000 megahertz uh, clock uh, with the uh, power fan activated, 113 frames per second, 90 degrees there. So, remember the overclocked ones, I also have the GPU overclocked as well. So, Gears of War 4. Uh, the previous driver uh, gave 100, 100 frames per second at uh, 95 degrees C. Um, upping to the latest drivers, 109 frames per second. So that is awesome, nearly a 10% increase. Uh, the temperature has actually dropped to 77 there, which is great for some reason. And then uh, the 3500 MHz with the GPU overclocked, uh, base fan, uh, 113 frames per second, so a nice increase there, but the temperatures again increased. Um, increasing the clock to 4000 megahertz uh, with the power fan GPU overclocked 115 frames per second but at toasty 94 degrees so Rise of the Tomb Raider didn't seem to benefit too much from overclocking but the new drivers did uh, giving uh, 98 frames per second versus 91 um, which is a great uh, increase um, so uh, going to the 3500 megahertz and GPU overclocked 94 frames a second, but uh, increased temp temperatures to 94 degrees and uh, zapping it up to 4000 megahertz with a power fan GPU overclocked 96 frames a second and the power fan did bring the temperature down to 89 degrees So Rainbow Six Siege, wow! Look at the uh, increase in performance uh, upgrading the drivers to the newest 375.57 93 frames a second versus 76 Fantastic, and temperature's fairly low too at 78. I like it. Um, going to 3,500 megahertz with the GPU overclocked, um, base fan, 102 frames per second, uh, 84 degrees, and uh, boosting it up to 4,000 megahertz, uh, GPU overclocked, power fan, 103 frames per second, and the temperature's come down to 79 degrees. So, The Witch of Three. Again, the new drivers, 375.57, not only netted a huge increase in performance, uh, probably close to 20%, uh, 
um, but also brought temperatures down, which is a fantastic combination. Um, up into uh, say 3,500 megahertz uh, uh, with the uh, base clock uh, of the fan, 81 frames a second, uh, 92 degrees. Um, of course, the GPU is overclocked there, and on the uh, 4,000 megahertz GPU overclocked power fan. Give an extra couple of frames a second there at 83, uh, but did bring the temperature down to 84. Grand Theft Auto 5 loved these new drivers. Look at that, 99 frames a second compared to 66. Incredible. Temperature came down uh, dramatically too, so it's a good win-win. Um, going for the 3500 MHz uh, clock uh, with the GPU uh, um, overclocked base fan, 104 frames a second, 86 degrees. And upping it to the 4000 megahertz overclocked, GPU overclocked, super fan kicked in, 112 frames per second, 88 degrees. So we all like to game at higher resolutions, right? What we can do, look at Crisis 3, uh, stock clocks 34 frames per second, 85 degrees C, and the uh, 3500 megahertz clock uh, with the GPU overclocked. Um, went up to 39 frames per second and uh, the uh, mod in the uh, Intel tuning utility brought the temperatures down to 80 degrees C so that is worthwhile. Metro last light um, looking at the older drivers uh, stock clocks 30 61 frames per second 90 degrees C um, but using the newest drivers again with the mod overclocking the GPU 69 frames per second uh, and again the temperatures came down to 85. Now there's no doubting that this laptop is really hot and aside from uh, repasting the CPU which is a daunting task for most people what else can we can we do um, does the Intel utility work really uh, can we bring the temperatures down further well let's have a look Metro last light without the Intel utility um, that temperatures were 90 degrees Celsius um, using the uh, settings I had there in the utility it brings uh, down the uh, temperature to 84 degrees uh, at the stock clocks uh, and if we use a cooling pad, I improvise one with two fans under a metal grate, that brings it down further to 74 degrees. So it's uh, starting to get into a workable uh, uh, temperature limit there. So that's not too bad. So let's uh, have a look at the conclusion. So let's uh, sum it all up. Switching to the new drivers is definitely worthwhile. Worth the effort, go to the NVIDIA website and uh, install them. Uh, it gives a 13% increase in frames per second and a uh, mysteriously a 15% lower temperature in the three games that I recorded. I also recommend using Intel's Extreme Tuning Utility, um, not only uh, overclocking the, the, the CPU to give it uh, stable compared to the BIOS, um, but also uh, just uh, using it to reduce down temperatures. In fact, I, I recommend perhaps sticking to stock clocks and uh, reducing the temperatures. Uh, temperatures come down by 7%. Um, so, can't complain about that. Many of us have uh, cooling mats uh, for our laptops. And I recommend using one if you have one, a fan blowing uh, one, preferably. I uh, concocted one uh, using a metal grate and two fans because I couldn't find mine, but uh, it did reduce temperatures by 12%, so that's worth doing as well. I hope you found uh, these uh, little uh, tweaks uh, useful. Um, Alienware should have done a better job uh, cooling it in the first place. Um, but uh, that being said, uh, aside from uh, uh, repasting your CPU yourself, these uh, little tweaks should be able to help you uh, at least bring temperatures down to a manageable level. So again, thanks for watching. Please uh, give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you feel so inclined. Bye now.